Okay, this meeting is being recorded. Good evening, my friends. Uh, this is Joe Bell calling in from Sanctuary Online. And as many of you know, it's been a while. And we're incredibly happy to welcome you here tonight to our 2022 virtual annual meeting. And since someone made a slide for that, let's pop it up. And we can see. So thank you, Barb, for doing some of our slides tonight. And uh, myself for doing some slides tonight. And if you have your, if you're not muted yet, you can go ahead and mute yourselves if you'd like to. But um, my name is Joe Bell, as I said, and I want to just uh, um, welcome you. I'm one of the team members here at Sanctuary in the Woods. And joining me is the rest of our amazing and healthy and good looking team. We've got um, Cheryl up in the corner. Cheryl's in San Antonio tonight, holding the fort down <clears throat> for her family. And Ken and Tom over in the big house and Barb over with Grace in the little house, right? So um, the first thing we want to say to you tonight is we are so <laughs> glad to be back in front of you, back in front of the cameras. We took a bit of an unscheduled break and you'll get some updates on that and how that's going in a few minutes. Um, the second thing we wanna say is that while we may have been taking some time away from the camera, we certainly weren't taking time off, not from making the progress at Sanctuary, which is what we're so excited to share with you tonight. A lot of that progress from 2022, as well as a peak into 2023. So on behalf of um, our amazing team, again, I just want to deeply honored to welcome you and welcome you back, those of us who have been away from these cameras for just a little bit too long. So over the next um, hour, Ken and Cheryl and Barb and I will be sharing with you um, really a little bit of the progress we've made over the last um, few months in 2022. Yeah. A bit of what put us on hold for these last few months. And like I said, a sneak peek into what we're so excited about in 2023. Now, last year at our annual meeting, if you were there, you may have remembered um, that we shared how our response to that initial blow from COVID kind of split us into a North and South team. Cheryl and I were up in Michigan where mom is talking of snow. Thank you, mom and Linda, because <laughs> thank you that you're up there and we're not. Um, we were keeping mom safe from the virus, we so thought, by keeping her out of the, the shopping centers. And while Ken and Tom and Barb remained down here in Austin on the sanctuary property, um, also keeping themselves safe from the virus. So this year, we've been truly blessed to be all back together on the property. And again, you'll hear tonight how COVID has impacted us because it shifted the how of the what we set out to do when we first laid down our mission to build a community and a place for that community to gather. And as we said last year, we can say it again, our response to the COVID pandemic, while it has challenged us, it's also blessed us. And as you can imagine, that greatest blessing, responding to the pandemic with Sanctuary Online and growing our base um, and our community um, over those months of lockdown still remains one of our greatest challenges. You know, we look back at that very first virtual Seder when we asked the question, how hard could this be? And it, the answer to that question literally launched us, you know, into Sanctuary Online and a whole new era and brought us so many gifts we never would have experienced had we not responded by seeing opportunities rather than just challenges. So tonight, um, while we share, we're talking mostly about 2022, people began to come out of the lockdown, right? And began to get out and travel again. And yet many others discovered how wonderful it was to be somewhere while remaining in their comfort of their own home. Right, mom? <laughs> my, my mother will probably never again step foot in a physical church building, except for weddings and funerals. Um, because while she was locked down, she realized she could go to church anywhere. And she does. She attends at least two different church services, sometimes in two different countries, every Sunday, all while sitting right there where you see her right now <laughs> at her kitchen table. And so like churches everywhere who, as we began to welcome people back, um, we we're ecstatic to welcome many of you, those who can come back to the property, to the property. But we are committed, and we want you to hear that tonight, to continuing to offer a virtual path 
to sanctuary as well. So as you might know too, while our online presence and our physical presence offers us a double blessing, it is indeed going to offer us a double challenge. Because now, whenever we do the work to host an event on site, we're gonna work to see if we can also do the work and have the bandwidth to host that event online. So this new hybrid model of building our community will have us half on site, half online, half both on site and online, which is really bad math, which should make most of you happy that I'm the one that is not in charge of the finances or the numbers down here. So that's all good. Um, but the whole point of that is we um, we just were excited and, and we want to commit to you and tell you while things have been changing and while we've dialed into what has been changing, um, we are committed to, to pro make progress on our site development, which Cheryl will share a bit here, and also in our online presence. Um, and I want to stop talking now and start showing, because as we prepared um, our events, uh, we prepare this meeting and we sit down and really talk about what has happened and where we want to go. We remembered again that many of you have never been on site. And so some of the things we're going to share with you tonight, you may not understand unless you can get, well, literally a bird's eye view to the property. So I'm going to share that with you right now by sharing my screen and maybe giving you a little perspective that as you listen to Cheryl and Ken and Barb later on tonight, you will be able to understand what we're talking about because you can understand where we're talking about. So for those of you that are getting a literal bird's eye view right now, this property inside the red line is kind of all the property that we're talking about right now, okay? And right across from Burleson Manor, if you were looking down on your screen, is that wonderful park we always talk of, hundreds and hundreds of acres that we use every day to enjoy. And anybody who comes on site, same thing, can enjoy that great park property. Legally, we have a description where we have lot two, lot three, lot four, and lot five. You're gonna hear a little bit of that language tonight. And each of these lots is between two and four acres by itself. Then um, lot two is where we've always spoken of having the retreat center. And you can see how cleared it is because we've done a lot of clearing of that property over there. Lot three, hopefully you like my drawing, that's our pond. <laughs> lot four is the homestead where we live. And lot five, for the most part, is actually still uncleared. Now, we tend to live inside this purple space. Um, it's a developed area, actually quite beautifully developed area. And we call it this side of the pond. So today you're going to hear that side of the pond and this side of the pond. And we wanted you to know what the heck we were talking about. A little more detail for those of you who haven't been here. <laughs> Cheryl and I and Bader live right up here in our uh, mama's little house, we call it a tiny house. We cruise across and here's Barb's house and her shed where Barb and Grace live. These big buildings right here are three prop houses where Tom houses 80,000 different props that he uses to rent to the movie and television industry. Right here, you can't see it very well, but this is Goaty Goatville. Over here to our beautiful gardens, our pool, and then Tom and Ken and Gov and Molly live in the big house. So good enough detail, a little bit of perspective. Thank you, Kristen. So you can see a little space of what we're talking about tonight. We thought you'd love this. Uh, thank you to Zillow for the, for the photographs. And then if we come down to street level, we still wanna show you, we're really so proud of so many of our gardens and the beautiful property. This is the site of one of Tom's um, prop houses. And here's where the chickens live. And then our garden, which normally is thriving in full, like you see it here in 2022, this year is resting. Leaves and leaves and leaves and more leaves, right, Cheryl? So we're gonna rest the garden and really bring that earth back to a vibrant state as we jump on that uh, next year again. Also, because you now know, the garden sits between lots fours and out here where you can see it uncleared is lot five. And then let's head over to the pool. How many of you would love this view with a cup of coffee 
and somebody else on this uh, uh, presentation tonight to join for a gorgeous cup of coffee in the morning. Marlene, what that's like a smiley face, right? Isn't that a beautiful shot of our pool looking out over the pond um, and into lot two. And then finally, here is um, the pool looking nice and quiet, <laughs> the pool looking nice and calm, and you're looking back into the property. You can actually see Ken's big hothouse where he starts most of the plants for the garden. And just past the little fence is a horseshoe pit, over here, a fire pit, and then you're looking back into lot five again. So my friends, a little tour, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and yet, let me let me get started here. So I'm gonna pass this over to, to Ken with a couple um, moments of admin. If you have any questions, any comments, please put those in the chat. And uh, Cheryl, you and Barb will grab those as the day goes on. And um, stop me, interrupt me, whatever. And so we'll address those. Um, our goal tonight, as always, is to run this and to um, have the presentation last about an hour. We've got some time for Q&A. And if anybody wants to stick around afterwards for a beverage and just do a chat and a catch up, we're good for that as well. So anything I'm missing as of yet in the chat, ladies? <laughs> Kevin, you're wondering where the donkeys are, right? The, the donkeys actually right now have the run of five behind the pond and over on the two. They're very, very happy, especially our new fellow, um, Willie's new friend, Mr. Nelson. <laughs> Ken, it's all yours, my friend. Okay, thank you, Joby. And welcome everybody. It is really, really good to see faces. Uh, again, before I share with you about programming here uh, at Sanctuary in the Woods, I, I asked the team if I could have just a, a moment of personal privilege just to say thank you to so many of you for your prayers and your good wishes. I, I've had literally more than a thousand responses to my health updates and hundreds of cards and, and letters and um, so many gestures of support and, and generosity over these past few months. I know that uh, there's some of you who have taken this same journey that I've recently been on with cancer and with other things. And you know how important it is just to know that your family and your friends are thinking about you and lifting you up. And I knew that. I knew it because you told me. And today I'm cancer free. And, and one of the big reasons is the support that you have given me. So I just want to say thank you to you. And now, there are three primary influences that helped us develop programming here at Sanctuary in the Woods in 2022. First of all, we watched and listened closely as the world around us came out of the pandemic with everything that that meant. And second, we stayed in very close contact with our supporters and constituents here locally. And thirdly, we were influenced by our own life events. For example, at the beginning of last year, there was no way that I could possibly have imagined that the second half of the year for me was going to be consumed, first of all, by spinal stenosis surgery, and then a few weeks later, a cancer diagnosis. But the very positive result of everything has been that we have found ourselves moving from being confined almost exclusively to an online presence to still being online with programs like the book club and the highly successful Giving Tuesday fundraiser and the sanctuary kitchen shows, which led to the publication of the beautiful sanctuary cookbook but also being able to include more on-site events like our 2022 Easter potluck and hosting a graduation party with teenagers splashing in the pool all afternoon and uh, having a wedding in our beautiful gazebo and our spring cleanup and painting party. And also many of you visited us here on the property and you enjoyed meeting and playing with uh, some of our feathered and furried and four-legged creatures, uh, all of whom are a part of our sanctuary family here, and others of you left with bags of fresh vegetables, 
from our gardens or a dozen farm fresh eggs, all organic, of course. We even created one fully hybrid experience by hosting the Seder dinner and liturgy with people both online Ken, you've gone on mute, Ken. Ken, I'm going to ask you to unmute. There you go. Okay. There you go. All Did good. Did I just go on, on, on mute? Yeah, just, just for a moment. Okay. So as programming continues to develop here at Sanctuary in the Woods, we will continue with our online programs like uh, Sanctuary Kitchen and the Book Club. And as many of you know, we worked really diligently all through 2022 to be ready to share creating a life that matters online. And after dozens of work sessions around our dining room table, we were so excited and we were ready. But then when my cancer diagnosis came, the team made the very difficult decision to postpone CLM until 2023. So now we are re-energized and we are ready and we are very excited to share this life transforming curriculum uh, later this year. And we will be taking advantage of this post pandemic freedom to sponsor and host even more events here on site. So we remain committed to our original vision of providing online programming that is relevant and entertaining and inspiring and we are always exploring new opportunities to use our existing resources and also to create new facilities to host even more events here on site. So now, Jovi, I think you have some photos to illustrate some of these things that I have been talking about. I sure do, Ken, thanks so much. And that's what we're gonna try and do. As you hear each of the speakers, we're then gonna give you a little bit of some slides to bring those comments to life so um our book club has been so wonderful and so loyal 23 22 books down 23rd book to start up next month and so congrats to that book club i'll give you more information near the end of the night about um how we're kicking this off again and starting up reading in april ken also mentioned giving tuesday one of our most, well, our, by far, our most successful Giving Tuesday. And we're gonna share a little more of why that was, thank you, Denise, um, later in our presentation. And then Sanctuary Kitchen. Hopefully you grabbed a few of those wonderful Sanctuary Kitchen um, evenings on Sanctuary Online. And this was our second one. Not only did you learn how to cook something that was fabulous, but you got a little bit of a lesson as well. On this one, remember, Ken, you were telling us all the difference between what it means to be Cajun or Creole. <laughs> and then that led to, intentionally, my friends, to our most amazing cookbook. We are so proud of this labor of love. Here on the left was kind of our, our graphics as we were um, taking a look at it and putting it together. And here on the right was a picture of these stacks and stacks as we put all these books together. They did not come put together. When you get them, they're put together. You're welcome. <laughs> that took us forever. And then as Ken said, we were so happy to see the pool, children, teenagers, dear God, jumping around and having a great time as Zach and Zoe had their graduation pool party here at Sanctuary Online, or sorry, Sanctuary in the Woods. Liz and Carly came out and to a most beautiful and wonderful wedding, as Ken said, in our gazebo. And then the painting party. Dear God, thank you for those of you who are here. Um, <laughs> you'll see right here a whole bunch of folks with a whole bunch of red paint. Barb looks like you're supervising and kind of happy to be doing that and not holding a paintbrush. And one of my favorite photos ever of Janice and her little, she brought her, it, is it? radio flyer right she brought a um wagon full of stuff so she painted wherever we asked her to go <laughs> love that picture and then another use for the pool party uh denise mary pretty sure that's you all cheryl possibly with some beers i hope tom's not looking because they might have been in glass bottles um ken with his <laughs> and barb and grace just really enjoying that day um how many times, Barbara, we hoped or wished 
that we had a whirlpool back there for after backbreaking work like this, we could jump in and have some work done on our backs as well. Anyway, that, and then as Ken just said, this is our new way of being. We've got sanctuary, this is our Seder, our very first Seder, if you notice. I think um, the camera was actually up on a bunch of chicken stock boxes. You, you can see we were very professional our first time and we moved that on, pictures of surviving it. And now we are working in an online presence as well as this Seder um, picture down here in the bottom of an on-site presence as well. Cheryl, let's talk some numbers. Are we talking numbers? Or site development. What do you site want development. to do? <laughs> okay. Let's talk site development. Okay. All right. Um, last year, we told you our next steps for site development were to design a building layout, secure funding, and search for a contractor. And after our annual meeting, we moved forward with all three of those. We took a day trip out to Grandview, where we looked at the Leland cabin models then spoke to one of their designers so they could create and price a retreat building with four hotel-like rooms and a large common area. We also met with our bank representative to find out what our next steps were to secure a loan. And we had a contractor come to the property to see it and to discuss what we were planning. And as you might expect, all of these meetings generated more questions than they answered. With supply chain issues and rising cost of materials and construction, what makes sense? Our meetings revealed just putting in the first two pieces of infrastructure, the septic system and a road, would cost as much as one of Leland's cabins. And that didn't even include bringing in new utilities like electricity, water, and internet. Post COVID, what type of facilities once built would be used enough to cover the operational and maintenance expenses. Day use facilities would be easier to clean and maintain. And maybe we could even eliminate the need for a septic system by renting those luxury portable bathroom facilities. Now, there are even some nice hotels close by which could accommodate some overnight guests. Then we began hearing stories of other people's dreams brought to a standstill or even abandoned due to these huge cost increases. It was so sad. So we did what we do. We stepped back, took a deep breath and rested for a moment. Once refreshed, we committed to reframe all these issues as problems of opportunity. Then we re-engaged from a new perspective. We started thinking about the events we've had on this side of the pond. Weekend retreats, church board trainings, seminars, club meetings, weddings, and lots of celebration parties. Sanctuary already provides a lot of satisfying experiences and everyone who comes onto this property senses the holiness and feels uplifted. Yes, here on this side of the pond. We've been so blessed to be able to share what we already have. Even the sanctuary stone welcomes you here. What if we continue to use what we already have and find ways to expand our capabilities here on this side of the pond? We already have built an infrastructure here on this side of the pond. We don't have to start from scratch. And actually, we have almost three times as much property to work with as on the other side of the pond where we originally envisioned the retreat site. So we're exploring ideas that leverage what we already have. For overnights, we already have two RV hookups with accessible water and electricity. People could bring their own RVs and or we could rent or even buy a trailer or two. And we're investigating, redesigning and building out the largest of the prop house buildings to be used for events. 
There's plenty of land space around it for a driveway, for parking, and for a large enclosed deck. And then there's the pond. This past fall, it was our biggest site development project to date. After five years of frustrating back and forth with government agricultural folks, and after several Band-Aid solutions, we took advantage of the drought and finally did a much needed dig out and cleanup of the pond. We doubled the water surface size and tripled the volume of water by increasing the depth. And two days after the construction crew left, our decision was blessed. It rained, <laughs> filling our pond back to a decent level. We've always considered our pond one of the exquisite and integral uh, features of sanctuary. Water is just refreshing, eh? Imagine the area around the pond with benches for reflection, picnic tables, and even a fish cleaning station. We've so often talked about building a bridge over to the island. Similar to our sanctuary stone, it would be a great photo spot for weddings, family reunions, and team events. So many possibilities. We're very excited. And did I mention that on this side of the pond, we don't have to start from scratch? So that's where we are now, continuing to consider the changing world around us, our current resources and capabilities, and how we can make sanctuary in the woods an even more special place to rest, refresh, reframe, and re-engage. Many of you who have been here and probably can visualize even more possibilities. And as we continue to explore, we welcome your thoughts and your ideas. And now, Joby, do you have some photos you can share of the pond project? You're on mute, love. Oh, I was just saying, of course, dear, you're always right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that, my friends. Let me jump in and show you. Um, again, for many of you who have seen the pond, you might be shocked if you haven't seen it recently. And uh, for those of you that haven't seen it, uh, hopefully we'll give you a nice option for some here, some before and afters. Now this, this view of the pond right here is you're looking from the show, what, from the, the um, bird's eye view that I showed you, you're up at the front of the property and you're looking way to the back if you remember where the pond is. This right now, my friends, for us is almost not recognizable. I went on and looked at this tonight. Ken, can you imagine that this is what it looked like just last summer? Um, you can see it overgrown. Unfortunately, it's not very deep. And as Cheryl said, we totally took advantage of the drought um, because the pond was so low. And, and Cheryl, I'm not sure if you told these folks how many hours you have personally spent meeting with people and having folks come out and trying to use different um, products to clean the pond. It's just been a time suck, I think, since we moved here, right? So really a big opportunity to invest and spend some money and get some yellow gear out here. So a similar view, honestly, this is up by um, the tiny house where Cheryl and I live. This is an island, my friends which normally would mean it would be, by definition, surrounded by water. <laughs> You'll notice that it's not. That's how dry it was here last summer. So not a speck of water back here, which is the actual shallow end of the pond. And the big yellow gear is in the deep end of the pond right now. You'll notice, you can see the tracks. It's not really that deep. So what happened, you're looking again into the sanctuary side right now. Um, over into lot two, and these guys dug and dug and shaped, and this is the shallow end of the pond. If you were to look at my um, cursor right now, right over here is actually the street and the park, and this is looking straight into lot two um, from the homestead over here, lot four. Once again, shaping 
and digging, you can start to see a pile of earth that was dug out. And you can see even down here how much deeper they've dug the big end. But as Cheryl said, we increased the surface area, increased the volume, and just made this pond the beautiful feature that we hope it's going to become for photo opportunities for so many events as we move forward and develop the property. This is a picture from actually the very far back of the pond. And you're looking at the deep end. <laughs> um, here's the big house. You can see the fence and the pool right there. And here's the tiny house where Cheryl and I live, lights to the soccer field across the street. So again, as they were digging it out, just it almost looks like a mud puddle rather than a full pond. <clears throat> Finally, as Cheryl said, uh, we finished up and I swear as those folks drove off the property, it began to rain. So here's a little bit of Bader perspective. Yes, you'll notice that she's wet, mom, because she already went swimming. Um, and this is the pond. Now the island is back here. You can start to see the shallow end filling up. A little closer view of the big house, of the tiny house. And then here's what she looks like now. Is that not just absolutely amazing? Looking back from the road, the very back of the property, and they have dug this out beautifully, cleared it. Look at all this, all this cleared for us, just gorgeous. The island is now surrounded by water, <laughs> and there's a little more for God to do in filling her back up. Good enough, Cheryl? Yeah, again, that took some courage, my friends, to do something, to take on something that um, big. I think, Ken, I don't know if we were all holding hands when it was decided to happen and praying um, that it would be the right move, but clearly it has shifted the property and the pond will continue to become that beautiful feature um, as part of Sanctuary in the Woods. And Joby? Yes, sir. Tomorrow our new fish arrived. The pond will be stocked tomorrow <laughs> with channel catfish, bluegill, and fathead minnows. So by late this summer, we'll be fishing again. That's awesome. Uh, Edie, does that mean you and Mandy are going to come back? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody with the pole, right? Come on back. Okay. Anybody yeah, ch chances are pretty good that if we're anywhere in, in the within the state of Texas, Mandy is going to show we're going to show up and say. And I and we should say that at that graduation party, we let people know there was a fishing pond, and um, some one of the folk, one of the young men showed up with his fishing gear. Um, <laughs> yeah, he he was not interested in the swimming pool; he was interested in um, fishing. So it's a it's a nice attraction. Absolutely. And it's beautiful, even more beautiful now. You you just die to see it, Edie. Oh, man. Toby? Barb. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just had a question. Jane Ann, thank you very much, who asked if we had had uh, thought of an aerator feature. As a matter of fact, <laughs> that's our fact, next Jane improvement. Ann. That's a 2023 <laughs> thing. But all of the gear for the aerator has arrived today. It's It's still in boxes. But yes, we are putting in an aerator. <laughs> which means an aerator under the water and a fountain, a beautiful fountain on top of the water. So yeah, we are so excited. Thanks for that leading question, Jane Ann. Lead the witness. Oh no, it's it's really good for the fish. And it's yes, also, it is. If, right. if you hit, I don't know if it's spring fed or if you dug down deep enough that you hit water, but it the air helps the porousness of the bottom of the pond bring its water up to the top so yep. it and it'll just yep. be beautiful yeah we're right but there. it's mostly for the fish yep. it's really mostly for the fish <laughs> right no yep. no jane right. the underneath is mostly for the fish <laughs> on top is mostly for me i want to see a fountain i want to see the beauty <laughs> so it's going to be functional and beautiful barb i think you're up my friend um, I'm going to, actually, I think Cheryl has a couple more things to, to share before, uh, before I go to my part. All right. Uh, you were right. Cheryl, you're again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, love. 
All right, I'm talking a little bit about some of our financial report um, for this meeting. Um, last year, when we came to this financial report, we told you we needed more donors, resources, and volunteers. And y'all came through with flying colors. Right away, we got a call from Liz Diaz. Thank you, Liz. She's not here, but maybe she'll listen. With a potential contractor we were able to meet with. We also started getting more donors and more donations. Since our last annual meeting, our number of regular monthly givers has more than doubled and the regular monthly amount has also doubled. Wow, and that's, thank you so, so much, you guys. And you volunteered. We had volunteers help with our website, our Facebook page, and with fundraising. 18 of you came out and helped with a big spring cleanup and painting party last year. And 18 of you helped with a ice storm cleanup this year. And some of you helped with both. Gold stars, thank you. We are so very grateful for your continuing love, support, and prayers. With your help, we now have 24 regular givers who donate through monthly checks, PayPal, and now also through Facebook Meta, which we were delighted to discover charges no fees. So if you donate $10, Sanctuary receives $10. We've added significant new financial capacity. And what I mean by that is we can, <clears throat> we can do sales through our website. Thank you, Blake Kruget, which allowed many of y'all to purchase cookbooks. And now we'll be able to do course registrations for CLM. These are things we couldn't do at the beginning of 2022. We can also do fundraising through our Facebook page. We got some fabulous help from Denise Bain. Thank you, Denise, who helped, um, who helped set up our Facebook site for fundraising. And she made it much easier to run our Giving Tuesday campaign and for anyone to do fundraisers for Sanctuary and even for folks to become regular monthly givers. As we were testing this new process, Kristen Vandermeer jumped in with our first donation. Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> proving that it worked. Yay! <laughs> then, during Giving Tuesday week, several people became monthly givers, and because of the way funds were being lump deposited directly to our bank, we didn't know that. A couple of months later, it became a mystery. We had more funds coming into the bank than we expected. A good problem to have, right? So we researched until we discovered Facebook's meta reporting system, which solved the mystery and revealed all our new monthly givers. Thank you all so much for your new regular financial commitment to Sanctuary. Also, the categorized financial system we began working on last year is now operational. Thank you, Kelly Robertson, my sister. This allows us to do better and more specific financial reporting and analysis. And as we discovered mailing our cookbooks was more expensive than we expected, we started looking for better solutions. So now we have an account with Pirate Ship. Ahoy matey! Yes, they actually send us emails and texts with lots of fun pirate greetings. Not only is Pirate Ship fun, it allows us to send out packages more efficiently and at a very reduced rate, an exciting new capability. So here are some big picture numbers. Joby, can you share this slide, please? All right, at the end of 2021, so also at the beginning of 2022, we started with over $22,000 and added another 21,000 to that during the year. This allowed us to fund two major projects. First, we published the Sanctuary Kitchen Cookbook, and second, we cleaned up the pond. And even after these major projects and our other regular expenses, we still ended 2022 with a balance of over $15,000. This was largely due 
to you all helping to make our Giving Tuesday campaign super successful. So before we share more financial details, Barb, can you tell us more about Giving Tuesday? Sure. Thank you, Cheryl. Grace says hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, Grace. Um, 2022 was our most successful Giving Tuesday uh, since we've been doing that, uh, doing that project. We leveraged our new and expanded direct sanctuary fundraising capacity, Facebook fundraising capacity. And my, being my uh, high school English teacher would be pleased with my alliteration there. Um, meaning that it was easier for folks to share an event to their own page. And we're grateful to Janice Pilgrim for blazing that trail to us. She was the first one to do that. Well, thank you, Janice. Um, and this is important, sharing it to, to your page, uh, because it introduces us to a wider circle of friends and expands our reach every time someone shares a fundraiser or even a regular post, for that matter. Um, Joby, do you have my Giving Tuesday slide handy? Thank you. So uh, where we ended up with uh, uh, Joby on the top of the mountain there with Bader is uh, we, we raised the most money, $6,249 US dollars. Um, we had the most number of donors to the campaign at 48 and the most new donors to the campaign at 11. So thank you, thank you for all of your support. It was an amazingly successful fundraiser for us. And you're, gonna, you're hearing it here first, mark your calendars. We plan to participate <laughs> again in 2023. This year, Giving Tuesday will be on November 28th, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving in the United States. And before we leave the Giving Tuesday topic, I wanna say a word about how important the capability to participate in Facebook fundraising is. Many of you saw and donated to the A Tree for Ken and Tom fundraiser in February that was sponsored uh, by the Sanctuary Board just after the ice storm here. That single event raised over $1,500 and the proceeds will be used to replace the sentimental tree that was lost during the ice storm. And any extra will be used to accomplish some other small projects that have been on our wish list for the property. We also had our first birthday fundraiser. Thank you, Brandy Rivera. This is another great way to introduce Sanctuary to your circle of friends on Facebook and bring in additional funds. So if any, any of you having a birthday this year, Maybe all of you? <laughs> Actually, Daryl, do you have a birthday? Is it maybe on Giving Tuesday this it year? It is. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have to sort out how we manage that one. But uh, in any event, uh, if you uh, would like to create a Facebook fundraiser for Sanctuary, we would be most grateful. It's fairly easy to do, but if you'd like some help in doing that, either Cheryl uh, or I will be more than happy to help you. Just give us a shout on talk to us or um, Cheryl at Sanctuary or Barb at Sanctuary, uh, email addresses or uh, text messages, you know, however you, you reach out to us, we'll be happy to help you. The other thing that, that I wanted to share a little bit on tonight, Grace, the, the big dogs are barking. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, Grace wants to help them. <laughs> and she's been quiet the whole time everybody else has been talking. <laughs> Um, so Joby, how about the next slide? Let's talk about the cookbook a little bit before I uh, give it back to Cheryl to, to finish up the numbers. As most of you know, we published a Sanctuary Kitchen cookbook in 2022. That project had three main objectives. First of all, and foremost, it was a labor of love to celebrate our shared love of food and of sharing meals with the people we love. It was our way to welcome those of you who don't live in the Austin area to the sanctuary table. Second, it was designed to build community. And one of the ways we plan on doing that is to form a Facebook group of cookbook owners so that we can all chat about the recipes that we've made, what we thought of them, and share any changes to the recipes because many of you are creative and wonderful cooks and will find ways to customize and make those recipes your own. So finally, our third objective then uh, was as a fundraiser. We received 226 cookbooks. And so far we have sold or gifted 82 books. 
when we sell our next 34, we will have covered all of our initial investment costs, which will leave us 110 books to sell for profit. Yay. So we're thrilled with how the book is doing. And if you'd like to help out with that next 34, if you have uh, friends that you want to refer, or if you want to pick up some more copies to hand out for gift giving occasions coming up you know, during the year, um, we can either help you um, send you a link to the website so that you or, or friends can order, or uh, we'll even stay on the call at the end if you, if you want to order them tonight while you're thinking about it. So the Sanctuary Cookbook gave us one more opportunity that I haven't yet touched on, and that's that we started out with the popular Sanctuary Online segment that we called the Sanctuary Kitchen. And by intention, we published some of those same recipes in the Sanctuary Kitchen Cookbook. And when it came out later, that, uh, later in the year, last year, we were able to utilize collaborative marketing strategies in order to link the Sanctuary Kitchen, part of Sanctuary Online, with the Sanctuary Kitchen Cookbook and build awareness that way. So the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. <laughs> and now back to Cheryl, thank you. And um, if you have any questions for me or otherwise I'll back to Cheryl to finish out the financial details. Thank you, Barb. And Jovi, I have one slide on that, please. There you go, hon. Thank you. All right, this are the details, some of the details on, on our financial report. And uh, I wanna start with the income. So you can see that well more than half, in fact, almost two thirds of our revenue came from monthly donations, $12,740. And Giving Tuesday provided another 6,250. Cookbook sales and some additional donations added another $1,900. Now for expenses, although our expenses were more than our income this year, we started 22 with a balance of $22,670. So by October, when we decided to clean, clean the pond, we knew we could do it. And with Giving Tuesday, we still closed 2022 with a balance of $15,000. $140. Now our largest expense was the pond. So site development was $20,280. And Sanctuary Online, cookbook publishing, events both online and on site, and other expenses totaled $8,156. Joe, are you asleep? No, honey. I thought you would be with the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just glaze over, love. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> would you like me to bring a few of your numbers alive, hon? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me do that. Once again, my friends, given bringing some of those numbers back into, into some focus that I love. Pictures of people doing stuff. Oh, there's the pond. Here we go. Again, great photos of those folks. On the left-hand side, you see that spring um, painting and cleanup party crew right before they headed into the, into the pool uh, with some refreshments. And then over here, we have the ice storm helping crew. This was a 2023 photograph. Uh, many of you saw the destruction that happened on the property. And here's the gang, and also um, Cheryl, your nephew, right, with his caterpillar who came out a couple times and really made a difference because he could, he could chop a tree with that thing significantly faster than any of our many chainsaws, right, I <laughs> were able to do. So thank you again to folks who came out and getting a gold star from Cheryl. For those of you who came out twice, <laughs> we appreciate it. <clears throat> now, Denise. Oh! Thank you, thank you, thank you. It, any of you I know who manage a nonprofit or who are part of a nonprofit, work with a nonprofit, you have to know how fundraising is just your lifeblood. And Denise Bain, when you helped us put this together so that we could go onto Facebook and our Facebook page became so much more functional, not only was the board able to 
um, run this ridiculously success, successful um, campaign for a, a tree for Ken and Tom after the ice storm. But also, as, as um, Barb shared earlier, Janice went ahead and when she put her own um, Giving Tuesday fundraiser on Facebook, what that does is it extends it to all of her friends, right? So we get to know people even further and it expands our circle. Same thing, Brandy, big shout out to you for being the first person who actually did the fundraiser for a birthday, right? So um, not that it's a plug, maybe it is a plug. Anyway, you can do this too, and it's not hard. If it's challenging, call Cheryl, call Barb, don't call me, but those two will be happy to help you make it work. Okay, and thank you uh, for the creativity and for what this means to us now. More functionality um, to help us develop our um, finances. And who do you mention, Cheryl? Liz, right, right away. And Kristen, who like in a nanosecond, Kristen, you gave us ten dollars. We were just saying, I wonder if this would work. Bang! Income. Yes, it does. Appreciate that. <laughs> and. Denise and the kitty, kitty, kitty spinning in. So helpful this year, Denise. Thank you so much for that. That means the world to us. We know that even our Giving Tuesday was more successful because of that. Here's Blake, who has done so much work on our website. We so appreciate him. And like, um, again, Cheryl or Barb mentioned real quickly, the fact that we can actually use the website now financially. You can buy a cookbook right there and just punch and it goes through or registering for CLM coming this fall. All that able to be done now on our amazing website. Kelly um, is still doing a lot of work for us in our financials and in our um, uh, reporting, in our taxes, and helping you keep things all clean, legal, and proper. Right, Cheryl? And then yes. Janice, uh, once again, Janice and Brandy for those amazing, um, just going out there and expanding our circle of friends. Um, I know, it's a great shot, don't you think? Yes. Brandy, yeah, good shot. Yes, Brandy, great shot. <laughs> I had others to choose from, Brandy, and I know they were all smiley faces, but this one looked cool. <laughs> and that's what we want to leave with tonight, really, folks. It is about community. And those of you who just just step up, you know, when we need you to and uh and and gift us with yourselves, your presence, your gifts, it means so much to us. Um, really, the lifeblood of our community is our community. So as we begin to close up tonight, my friends, I do just want to, again, say it's in such an honor for you to, um, to give us an hour of your time tonight to let us share that dream that remains in our hearts. Because since its inception, Sanctuary in the Woods has always been a place of peace and people, of conversations and community and of laughter and love and personal and spiritual expansion. And as I shared last year, the challenging side of building something so powerful and full of intention is that our dream did not come with an instruction booklet. And even if it had, our world has changed so much over the last few years that any set of instructions written before March of 2020 would be simply obsolete. And so as we're happy to share tonight, our story, and our journey continues to be one of continual becoming. We thank God we've leaned on God's timing and didn't rush into things. We test our own world, the world, our abilities, um, and, and leverage all that you have gifted us with. Um, we thank God that we risked expanding our online presence long ago after that successful virtual sanctuary Seder and launched Sanctuary Online. That decision by itself has forever changed us and allowed us to expand our next net network exponentially more quickly than we ever could um, had you have to come find us out here in the woods. You know, going online allowed us to dream bigger than we ever had. And while we listened carefully and we kind of let Sanctuary Online grow and shift and change and run its course, we're here standing at 2023 preparing for our biggest online leap ever, rewriting and redesigning CLM for a fully virtual launch, hopefully this fall. Now our aim of course is within all that we do is to ensure that we remain relevant, to stay true to and guided by our initial vision 
which was to bring quality connections to our community. So at our core, we remain teachers and clergies and coaches called to create space, be it brick and mortar or virtually over the internet. And as you've heard us, I hope tonight, we're committed to that new normal that so many organizations are adopting, a hybrid model where both paths, one online and one on site, will lead you to the safe space of sanctuary where people are heard, are challenged, and are loved. We want to remain a place that initiates important conversations and invites people to continue becoming, becoming rested and refreshed, becoming people who can reframe, becoming even more evolved and conscious and care, caring, powerful humans in community. And as we look to 2023, we of course have a list of ways we'd love to continue to invite you to engage and partner with us, ways you can help us keep becoming as well. I'm going to first invite you to join, consider joining our monthly book club. Anchoring each month, our book club owns that last Tuesday of the month. Thank you, Kristen. You know, you can come whether you read the book or not, right? It's always fabulous conversation. Um, I want you to mark your calendars, actually. We're going to begin our 23rd book. Thank you, bud. The Girl Who Wrote in Silk. We're going we're gonna to be um, sharing conversation around that the last Tuesday of April at 7 p.m. Central Time. Same station. Um, and we'll give you more information of how to connect with us again. But anybody can come. If you can read, if you can't read, if you can talk, if you can turn on a computer, mom, you can read, you can come. <laughs> She'll think about it. <laughs> but consider joining us this fall for CLM. We promise it will be one of the most transformational rides of your life, completely updated, all the bones still strong, a transformational journey. Consider coming out to the property. There's always a rake and a shovel and some good work that will ground you in the earth and help you to help us build and beautify this property that so many enjoy. And finally, my fourth invitation is a little more significant. We would love any number of you to join us in a volunteer role. And not that event by event volunteer, which you're so fabulous at, but rather is a little more of a committed role as part of our sanctuary team. We could use some help creating and maintaining content for our website, for our somewhat regular emails, and for our Facebook and Instagram social media sites. Um, with our new found financial functionality, you can follow in the footsteps of Brandy and host a celebratory fundraiser on Facebook for your birthday, for your anniversary, for anything that you want. Um, You've heard a couple of times tonight how important it is for us to rely on those of you who are monthly givers. So if you're not yet a monthly giver, consider becoming one. Call Cheryl, she'll be happy to hook you up. And if you are already a monthly giver supporting us through PayPal, give Cheryl a call. Please consider switching over to Meta that again, because we have this financial functionality on our Facebook, we can receive the entirety of your donation rather than letting the middleman scoop up nearly 7% sometimes um, in fees. And again, if you want to help in doing that, give, give Cheryl a call. She'll be happy to help you switch over. And my friends, tonight, we hold each of you and so many others in our hearts. As you hold our vision in your prayers, we feel your support and your encouragement in so many ways. As we close out tonight, I just want to encourage you, please stay connected with our regular emails, with our texts, with our social media posts. Stay up to date on all that is happening online and on site at Sanctuary. Thank you so much for tonight. Blessings and blessings and blessings. Thank you. We love you. Thank you.